What's going on Babylonians? It's me, Songs of Braze, and I am back to bring some more Diablo 4 content your way. Now today we're going to be discussing my brand new barrage build. This is going to be called the Rainbow Barrage because it does use all three of the special imbuements that we do have access to as the Rogue, and it's able to put some insane damage output, but it also has some really good staying power, meaning that I can kind of like, kind of last within like a massive mob of enemies, even with enemies that are 5, 10 levels ahead of me, which means that I'm just kind of have some really nice survivability and some really nice sustain in those kind of key moments that we need them to. Now in this video we will be discussing everything to do with the skill tree, we will be discussing everything to do with the gear and everything you could possibly need to set this one up. Uh, just know that this build does not use any uniques but we will be discussing a couple of uniques if you do manage to have them lying around or in your stash that you can feel free to swap into this and just feel free to get like you can get a little bit of customization going with this one so I will be suggesting some kind of light changes just in case you want to take it to the next level. With that being said though, if you do enjoy this build and you do enjoy the content, then make sure to drop that like and subscribe, it really does help the channel out, and we are pushing for that 5k subscriber mark for the end of the year, so anything you can do would be greatly appreciated. But with all that said and done, what are we waiting for? Let's get right into the build. Alrighty then, so as we always do, we start with the skill tree and we're going to be walking our way down this as quickly as possible, but also explaining the choices. Of course, the first point is that we will be going into a basic skill, and our basic skill is going to be vitally important when it comes to this, but as per always, we pretty much always rely on our puncture, and we will be going one point into that, one point into enhanced to give ourselves some extra energy on crowd control enemies, which we will be doing with this build, and we also have fundamental, allowing us to throw out three blades, and also allowing us to do some extra vulnerable just in case we need that extra kind of like few seconds for the rest of the build to proc off. So we've covered our basic, let's move our way down to our main damage dealer. This is going to be our core skills, and this is going to be Barrage. We have five points placed straight into Barrage, increasing the amount of damage that we will be doing, and we also have four points coming from our gloves, allowing this to go up to nine ranks out of five, making it so that we have a 40% in like damage or potential when we cast this skill, but it does so much more than that because it will be spreading here, there, and everywhere. So with this one, it just basically is an, a barrage of arrows, it kind of spreads out, it fans out, you have your pinpoint accurate first one, and then you have one that goes either side of it, and you do repeat this a second time, so it does have five arrows going out at a time, just as standard, but just know that is when we go into combo points, which is vitally important for the specialization on this one, it allows us to not only increase our damage, but also increase the amount of arrows that we will be throwing out, further increasing the chance of being able to do some extra ricochets and all this kind of nice jobs when it comes to extra damage. When it comes to ricochets, these have a 40% of the arrow's base damage, so you kind of like have to factor that in, so that's some nice mobbing potential right there, and each arrow has a 20% chance to ricochet off an enemy one time. This is never really going to be a factor, because we are going into enhanced, meaning that our ricochet chance is increased to 100% for arrows that damage a vulnerable enemy or critically strike an enemy, and we are looking to critically strike as much as possible, but on top of that, we also have, through the use of our Paragon board, way to make enemies vulnerable, so so we're pretty much almost always having a 100% ricochet chance with this ability. This gets impounded even further because we do go for an advanced barrage. Whenever a single cast of barrage ricochets at least four times, our next cast gains an extra 20% increased critical strike chance, which then go, like, loops back around into the rest of the build. So we get our, our first one to kind of like proc off, we get four ricochets, we now have extra critical strike chance. Because of how enhanced works, it means that we're going to be then ricocheting even more arrows because it's going to have a 100% accuracy thing. And then once again, because of we've managed to get four arrows to ricochet, advance then proc again giving us our 20% back and you can just see how having those two points right there has some really nice synergy when it comes to the skill. Before we move on though, we do also have two points into Sturdy, allowing us to have some extra da close damage reduction, and we have three points into Siphoning Strikes, allowing us to heal for 3% of our maximum life when we critically strike close enemies. Because of how Barrage is a little bit erratic in terms of its spray pattern, it is, means that we are going to be relatively close quarters, and this kind of section here is what's going to give some of our main like staying power when it comes to the majority of our firefights, because not only are we reducing the damage we will be taking, we're also massively healing because we are critically striking a bunch with this this build and because the ricochets also trigger this as well it means that we can get some insane healing power just from being able to use siphoning strikes so siphoning strikes along with barrage is just a match made in heaven this allows us to move down to our agility skills and this is where our tried and tested shadow step kind of comes into play allowing us to get and become unstoppable and getting us out of some crowd control situations or things that we just don't like the look of well, on top of that it also gives us 50% increased movement speed afterwards allowing us to 
reposition and find the way to start farming those enemies quite nicely. We also put one point into enhanced, so damaging an enemy with shadow step increases our critical strike chance against them by 8%. Once again, feeding really nicely into those extra critical strike chances, ready for barrage to do those ricochets. We also have one point into disciplined, allowing us to reduce uh, the cooldown by 3 seconds when it damages an enemy, and because we don't have it down to 4 seconds, it means that we're pretty much almost always going to have it, so we cut 3 seconds off. So as it currently stands with this build, I do have it at 8.16. But realistically, it's actually more like 5.16, which is right, quite consistent, means I'm going to pretty much almost have it every single time I kind of need it, unless I'm in a situation where I'm just consistently being frozen over and over again by multiple elites. We also have three points put into Weapon Mastery because we will be using crossbows with this build. It does mean that we have a 15% increased critical strike damage bonus right there. And because we are critically striking consistently with this build, it's just pretty much almost always a 15% increase to damage. We also have three points into Concussive and one point into Trick Attacks. These work really nicely off of each other and also work really nicely when it comes to Barrage because this means that we're going to be getting some extra critical strike chance on them. Trick Attacks, when you critically strike, a dazed enemy they are get, get knocked down for 0.5 seconds we don't need any more than one point into this because of how uh, concussive kind of works so we just need to knock them down we already have days ready for the crowd control perspective uh, so concussive after knocking that back or knocking down an enemy we gain 12% increased critical strike chance against them for three seconds so all we need to do is just proc our trick attacks knocking them down and then we get our 12% increased critical strike chance ready for everything that barrage can already do that pretty much ties up in the agility tree so we can move down to the subterfuge skills and this is where we're going to get our damage reduction right now and this is going to be one of the main reasons why I'm able to tackle such high level content quite nice and easily. This is going to be one point into Dark Shroud and we do have extra points because of our pants when it comes to our gear and I highly recommend that you do get some extra points. Uh, but what this does is surrounds ourselves with protective shadows and we gain anywhere up to, not what, as it currently stands at 5 out of 5, 9.6% damage reduction per active shadow and each time we take direct damage that damage is reduced and the shadow is consumed we get the next thing we do grow enhanced allowing so that shadows have a 10% chance to not be consumed and lastly we do have one point into countering so that when we have four active shadows uh, for, from dark shroud we also gain 8% increased critical strike chance once again feeding into what barrage will be doing with its ricochets now the important thing to know with dark shroud is that we won't be using the skill on our hop bar uh, we are looking to just increase the like the level like the efficiency of what dark shroud shadows can actually do and uh, because we will be grabbing them through other means we don't actually need the ability to start procking it off uh, so it, it makes sense to increase the amount of damage reduction right there and then also increase the efficiency from being able to grab enhanced as well as countering What's also important to know is that with Dark Shroud, how it kind of reduces the damage is that if we do round this up, say if we got 6 out of 5 ranks, this would put it up to 10% per active shadow. If you have maximum stacks of 5, it does mean that you have 50% damage reduction for that first instance of damage. That second instance will then take it down to 40%. Next instance will be 30% and you can kind of see how it works. So it is vitally important to get as much physical damage or damage reduction uh, into this ability as possible when it comes to the amount of points that we will be picking up from our gear so you can see why I've gone for extra ranks into this uh, and it's also going to be important once we get to our aspects to just kind of see how that all kind of fits together and just get even more damage reduction on top. Before we move on though, we do have three points into exploit, allowing us to deal increased damage to healthy and injured enemies. Uh, it's just a great kind of like fire finisher, and like a starter, as well as a finisher when it comes to uh, extra damage. Pretty much almost always a necessary. And we also have three points into malice with another point coming from our amulet, meaning that we now deal 12% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. But if you have three points into this, it will only be 9%. Once again, it's just a nice consistency because we will be making enemies vulnerable, ready for all the extra ricochets that we will be having when it comes to the barrage ability. This allows us to go into the main bread and butter, the main rainbow portion of this build, and this is where we go for our imbuement skills. Now we have mixed things up a little bit here just to make room for every single one of these skills because the majority of our damage will be coming while we have imbuement skills active, so therefore it makes sense to start working our way around. On top of that, all of the imbuement skills have their own specific niche, and it's very important to know which one you need at the right time. For example, Shadow is absolutely perfect for being able to do your mobbing, 
uh, because of the detonations and everything like that it is just pretty much the kind of like king when it comes to anything like that we also have poison which is going to be perfect once we enhance it a little bit further with the rest of the skill tree meaning that we're going to do some damage over time which is kind of nice and we will be stacking that up quite insanely because of how the ricochets kind of work and everything like that so every single hit adds even more poison damage on top of it but also because of how the uh, the rest of the skill tree works we will be reducing the amount of damage potential that enemies that are poisoned will be dealing to us which works really nicely with dark shroud which works really nicely with uh, uh, the rest of the stuff so like sturdy and everything like that so we are increasing our kind of like the potential our defensive side of things when we use poison so if you ever get in a tricky situation poison is there to be able to back you out of it and then lastly we do have cold imbuement which is almost always reliable in terms of freezing enemies this is pretty much what you need to take on elite uh, it's great in being able to start those crowd control modifiers it's great for being able to instantly freeze elite and that means that they can't do any of their damaging abilities it means that they can't do much when it comes to uh, what their special abilities in terms of like what they actually have on them as well uh, so cold imbuement is absolutely perfect for being able to start a fight and also like to take out some of those specific elites that you kind of need to and that kind of goes you a little bit of trouble so definitely keep that one in mind so let's start talking about shadow first, that makes sense, and then we'll work all our way around. We have 1.2 shadow imbuements, this means that we can do shadow damage, so non-physical. Uh, it will also mean that uh, uh, enemies will detonate uh, for after 6 seconds or if we kill them, and this is where the main true mobbing potential also comes in. Uh, we also then enhance this with enhanced shadow imbuements, giving us increased critical strike chance against injured enemies that have been infected with shadow. Uh, overall, once again, nice bonus to critical strike chance, meaning that we're going to get more of those ricochets from barrage. We also have a point into mixed meaning that enemies that are infected will also take 12% increased non-physical damage from us for eight seconds this will work with shadow imbuements this will also work with the other two imbuements as well so that's just a nice increase in terms of multipliers for our damage potential so we now don't pick up anything to do with Shadow Crash, we don't pick up anything to do with Consuming Shadows. This build has plenty of ways to keep its energy topped up, so we don't need to go into there and waste any points. That means that we can move on here and we can grab one point into Poison Imbuement, meaning that our, our, our next few cast off skills will be dealing poison damage, and once again be applying 120% of their base damage as additional poison damage over the 6 seconds. Uh, this is really really nice because we will be looking to uh, just like stack this up every single hit, whether it's the initial hit or whether it's a ricochet will take the amount of damage it will be doing it will do its initial point of damage and then it will add some extra damage over time on top of that we then enhance this so we grab enhanced meaning that poison duration is increased by one second but the real kind of winner here is going to be blended meaning that critical strikes which once again is consistently going to be almost all the time with poison imbued skills will deal 75 percent increased poison damage once again a really nice consistency and it just helps with that damage over time we also have one point into Deadly Venom, increasing our poison damage by 3%. And lastly, three points into Debilitating Toxins, meaning that poisoned enemies will deal 15% less damage to us, and I believe also to our co-op mates, just in case you do use this in a party. So that just leaves us with one last imbuement, and this is going to be Cold Imbuement, which imbues our skills with cold damage and chills enemies for 25% per hit. Now, as standard, this doesn't really like sound that amazing. That does mean that you need four hits to be able to get this to trigger to instantly freeze enemies. But when you consider that every single one of the arrows that we will be firing out with Barrage, so that's five arrows with the potential to ricochet another five uh, an extra time on each one. So that means 10 instances of damage. You can kind of see how this is kind of consistent when it comes to freezing enemies. But we then take this even further by grabbing Enhanced, which on a lucky hit may has a 30% chance to make enemies vulnerable. Once again, not really the important one, but the main kind of importance with this one is grabbing Mixed, which means our Cold Imbued skills deal 20% damage to crowd control enemies. So once we fire off our first Cold Imbuement, uh, that will be because it chills enemies, because it slows down their movements, they then become crowd control. We then also double this extra damage against frozen enemies, so that is a 40% damage boost just for being able to use Cold Imbuement on its second can cast. But before we move on from the imbuement tree, we do have three points into precision imbuement, meaning our imbued skills also gain 9% increased critical strike chance, just as standard, so it makes sense to start stacking ourselves into the imbuement to give us that consistency when it comes to our critical strikes. 
Moving on from there, we do have our ultimate skills, and as it currently stands, I do not use any of these. There is an argument that I will make a little bit later on that Rain of Arrows could potentially be slotted in here, but as it currently stands, I don't use it. I don't think it's uh, it's consistent enough, and I, I'm more than happy with my current barrage skills. I don't feel the need to have a single kind of like fire and forget uh, ability that's only ever like 50 seconds and everything like that. So I'd kind of leave that one out for the time being. But that does mean that we're then going to increase the amount of lucky hit chance that we're doing as standard. So we do put one point into innovation. So we have a 10% chance on a lucky hit to gain extra energy. But three points straight into second wind. So that we have a 15% increased lucky hit chance for five seconds after we spend 100 energy. And then also three points into alchemist fortune. So our non-physical damage, which is going to be all our imbuement skills, have a 15% increased lucky hit chance as standard, which is really, really nice to see. And you'll see, kind of see a little bit later on in terms of the build why we need the lucky hit chance because it's it kind of factors into our crowd control but it also factors into our damage re resistance uh, so we kind of need to be able to have those extra points right there that just leaves one last point and that goes into our key passive this will be precision where critical strikes with marksman skills grant us precision we gain extra increased uh, critical strike damage per stack of the precision all the way up to 20 percent and once we reach that maximum precision our next skill is going to be a guaranteed critical strike that deals 40 percent increased critical strike damage and then consumes all stacks of that precision because all of our skills so that's going to be puncture as well as barrage is going to be uh, marksman skills we're almost always going to be starting stacking up on precision so that is going to increase our critical strike damage which because we are going into so much into critical strike chance is just massive boost right there and then and we will be cycling through this so often and it's really nice to get that extra 40 percent right there so that pretty much wraps up everything on the skill tree let's quickly shift across to the paragon board let's talk about a couple of choices here and i'll leave the rest up to the rest of the written guide uh, but in terms of like the first board you definitely want us to do as you normally do over on the right hand side grabbing prime grabbing yourself some extra damage and then working your way up grabbing the glyph node and then walking your way up to the next board you definitely want to pick up both of these yellow nodes right here and this is also going to be vitally important for the glyph socket or the glyph node that i have chosen for this build and this one's going to be efficacy now usually i don't you intend to use this one because it just gives you a bonus to rare nodes but i think this is the best location you can actually use with efficacy because it gives you an, uh, an extra bonus to those rare nodes and on top of that it or as the additional it means our imbuement skill effects have a 20% increased potency meaning that our, our, cool, uh, our cold imbuement is going to freeze so much easier we also have poison that's going to be doing more damage over time and we also have shadow that's going to be detonating for bigger numbers making it so that mob clearing is so much more easier when it comes to it but the real winner that comes into this is because of the extra bonus to those rare nodes and that's because we have skillful which is going to increase our damage and also give us a small bonus to our dexterity but we also have lawless which increases our armor so increasing like gives us extra uh, defense once we're in kind of a bit of a fight armor is vitally important especially in endgame and we also have another bonus to our dexterity what i really like about how efficacy works is that if i take this out we can actually have a look at the nodes themselves uh, and so as standard skillful would have given us a 10% damage boost and another 10% damage if we met the requirements which we do in this case and then same with uh, lawless we also would have got 100 armor and another 100 armor if we met the requirements for strength because we do meet both of these this is why it's quite important because instead of how I was expecting it to work where it would just give us another 10% because of that's what the base node was going to be doing and it wasn't actually going to affect the bonus it doesn't actually work like that so once you slot that in instead of getting 20 percent we're now getting 40 percent damage so it doubles up on the bonus which is huge and then same with lawless it also gives us a double up on the armor as well uh, so that gives us some really nice staying power and some huge damage potential across the board especially since this is generic damage as well uh, i have gone back and forth between this and the crowd control one uh, so going to be control uh, so this gives us extra damage to chilled and frozen enemies it could work really nicely with the chilled uh Kind of like the cold imbuement and you definitely could get some max like some nice stuff out of the uh, crowd control targets especially with cold imbue uh, but i think because uh, efficacy works for every single skill rather than just purely the cold imbue i do think that's probably the more superior but you can definitely go back and forth on those ones that is te technically not a wrong option on those 
Moving on from there, we then go into our next board, and this is going to be the uh, the imbuement skill one, so having Eldritch Bounty. As you can see with the pattern I've gone here, I've gone all the way up to the left, grabbed these but imbued skill damage bonuses, and then worked my way all the way through the legendary node, gone diagonally across, grabbed some extra imbuement skill damage, grabbed some non-physical damage, all that. The next glyph that you do want slotted in is going to be Infusion. Uh, having this is a huge boost to your imbuement skill damage, which we will be using across the whole board with this build, and it's just our main source of damage. On top of that, having the additional bonus where we can get a get some cooldown reduction on, a, on imbuement skill once we do cycle through is also quite nice and it gives you that consistency to keep going through all of the skills and everything like that. So I definitely recommend being like this kind of like setup and I will be putting it up on the written guide. Over on the left hand side though we do move on into another board and this is going to be our crowd control board. Uh, so we do pick up the legendary node of cheap shot. But as you can see this is pretty much the pattern I've gone for. I did work my way down here first uh, being able to grab some nodes for like extra damage so a uh, press and all that we then grabbed calculated. We grabbed the cliff, uh, glyph socket here and when this one we put exploit. This is the consistency one. This is going to give, give us some extra kind of like uh, when it comes to vulnerable damage and also always having that vulnerable status on enemies uh, allowing us to have that extra ricochet chance um, because if you meet the additional bonus on this the first time you damage an enemy they become vulnerable for three seconds absolutely huge i can re recommend that enough uh, we've moved up to things like a uh, damage reduction right there damage to crowd control damage to healthy enemies which is quite nice but the other kind of like key thing to here the one that's like just like an unsung hero is actually going to be this node here which is safeguard where we get some damage reduction from elites this once again really kind of helps us with staying in the middle of a pack and just having that sustain once we do filter in with siphoning strikes we can also pick up some magic nodes to give you some extra armor and some additional damage reduction to elite uh, but uh, this section right here is vitally important especially in late end game and i highly recommend that you do put the points away there so that allows us to be able to shift over to our specializations and this is going to be combo points we did discuss this a little bit shorter but to give you like the main kind of like gist of this uh, our basic skills will generate those combo points and our core skills expend them how this works with barrage is that once we will get some points into this it gives us additional arrows and also gives us additional damage so at one point we will be getting an additional arrow so that goes all the way up to six from five two points we will get two additional arrows and three points we get three and we also get an additional 23 percent damage at maximum three points and that is going to happen for the initial hit but it's also going to work off and feed into the additional ricochets as well so i definitely would recommend going into combo points i do think this is going to be the best one to go for so that allows us to have a look at the gear and also the aspects and then i can recommend a couple of other uniques that can possibly help you out a little bit more with this build in terms of the helmet, we do have Umbrus, which on a lucky hit, critical strikes with marksman skills have up to a 40-60% chance to grant a free Dark Shroud Shadow. This goes back into the skill tree, and I was explaining how we're able to get free Dark Shadows, so why we're investing heavily, even though we don't have them on the skill bar. You also want to be able to look out for things like cooldown reduction on your helmet. You also want to look out for ranks of shadow imbuement or any of the imbuement skills whatsoever. Feel free to pick your favorite, but shadow is really, really nice for mobbing, which is pretty much makes up 85 to 90% of the fights that you do go into. So I do th actually really like that role. Moving on from there, we do roll into the chest piece, and this is going to have disobedience, where you gain uh, a small percentage of increased armor for four seconds when you deal any form of damage, stacking all the way up to 50%. This is going to be really nice, it's one of the main ways to give you some damage reduction in the middle of a fight, and you also want to look out for some extra rolls in terms of like uh, on the actual chest. Uh, so we've got damage reduction from close enemies, which is quite nice, but it also has some extra rolls for imbuement skill and imbued skill damage, uh, so you can have some really nice damage potential on your chest piece definitely feel free to look out for one of these really cool item pieces in terms of the gloves we do have in a calm and what this does is it deals at anywhere between 5 to 10 percent increased damage for each second you stand still up to 30 percent uh, i'm kind of going back and forth on this one to be completely honest with you but this one does kind of help out in some scenarios i was finding that uh, when i got into the middle of a fight if i needed to try and finish it off quickly this gave me an extra damage potential especially in ones where i couldn't move uh, and i'm just pretty much surrounded on all sides so you can definitely use in a calm to some great effect but it doesn't always 
always come into the, kind of like in the mix or anything like that so you can definitely feel free to swap this out and we will be talking about an additional glove that we can swap in a little bit later what's most important with this one is things like ranks to barrage that's 100 vital when it comes to these kind of gloves uh, and you also want to look for maybe a roll into critical strike chance and anything into lucky hit chance is also kind of important because then that allows you to get, get your umbras back a little bit more consistently getting your extra dark shrouds so that allows us to move on to the pants and this is going to be end shrouding where we gain a free dark shroud shadow every three seconds when standing still but the real reason we use this is because each dark shroud shadow grants us anywhere between two to four percent increased damage reduction which is massively huge what this means is that if we did work off the fact that it was six out of five ranks so we have that nice round 10 percent per shadow this means that each shadow will then instead of doing 10 percent we'll be doing 14 percent and that can stack at five shadows all the way up to 70% damage reduction. This is huge and I highly recommend that you do, do look out for a great roll on this uh, because that is going to be a massive lifesaver especially in the middle of some fights and it's just going to be one of the main ways to reduce all that incoming damage to yourself. We also want to look out for ranks into Dark Shroud on our pants, so definitely recommend that. And if you can get some damage reduction and some imbuement skill cooldown reduction, that would also be appreciated. Moving on from there, we do go into our boots, and this is going to be the Manglers. And what this means is on a lucky hit, dealing direct damage to a vulnerable enemy has up to a 25 to 45% chance to daze them for two seconds. This is uh, then means that we can feed it back into uh, like trick attacks and everything like that. So we will be knocking enemies down. We will be gaining increased critical strike chance against them. Uh, so this is going kind of giving us uh, additional ways to do crowd control, allowing us to get those extra modifiers, those extra multipliers for damage, but also then giving us extra critical strike chance massively important i highly recommend putting manglers in there somewhere we then go, go shift on to the jewelry and the first one we do have is edge masters where skill, skills deal up to 15 to 30 percent increased damage based on your available primary resource when you cast them because we're pretty much almost always going to be topped up when it comes to energy this means we're getting a nice damage boost right there in terms of rolls on this you do want to try and find some imbuement skill damage that would be great uh, and if you can get some extra ranks into malice or even exploits that would also be great as well it's a big use a big boost to your kind of like damage potential highly recommend that as well moving on to the rings though we do have accelerating where critical strikes with core skills increase your attack speed by anywhere between 15 to 25 percent for five seconds this is great because not only is this a great thing to increase your dps for your barrage but it also then feeds into your puncture and being able to have it on your puncture means you can start stacking up your combo points much much faster uh, so i highly recommend being able to try and find that in terms of like rolls in for like damage, you kind of want to go for the vulnerable damage. But my next ring has got the perfect rolls that I'm kind of looking for. And that is going to have Ravenous in terms of the imprint. Uh, but in terms of rolls on it, you want critical strike damage, you want critical strike chance, and you want damage to close enemies. Anything that will rip pretty much feed straight into this build and increase the amount of damage you will be doing. How Ravenous works though is killing a vulnerable enemy grants you anywhere between 50 to 70% increased energy regen for 4 seconds and that is quite substantial to be honest with you because I have seen my energy bar just pretty much like skyrocket all the way back up to full. Pretty much every time I do cast a barrage I highly recommend giving Ravenous a go and you'll be quite surprised as to how effective this actually is. So this allows us to be able to move on to the one-handers and this means that we're going for expectant. Attacking enemies with a basic skill increases the damage of your core next core skill cast by anywhere between 5-10% to 10 all the way up to 30%. This pretty much is, is a great aspect to pair with combo points because you will be doing this as standard. So not only is combo points working to increase the amount of damage you will be doing, on top of that you also have this aspect working really really nicely to increase the amount of damage you will then have once you cast your ability. Highly recommend being able to put expectant somewhere on this build and i've currently got it on my weapons in terms of like the uh, one handers that you do want you kind of want to go for swords uh, you can get away with daggers but just know that swords do increase your critical strike damage and considering we will be doing critical strikes here there and everywhere it makes the most sense to try and kind of go roll straight into that as much as possible but on our next sword, we do have Corruption, where our imbuement skill effects have a 38% increased potency against vulnerable enemies. Every single enemy we will be going up against is going to be vulnerable. And this imbuement increase means that we're going to be doing more poison. It means we're going to be doing more chill effects. We're going to be doing more shadow explosions. It just, it just improves, it improves everything to do with imbuement skills, which, like I said, we have lent heavily into with this build. 
So that just leaves us with our crossbow, and this gives us the aspects that feeds perfectly into barrage. This is going to be branching volleys, where barrage's arrows have a up to a 30 to 50% chance to split into two arrows whenever they ricochet. This is going to be perfect for mob control. This is like density. This thing will absolutely destroy things. And remember that once it splits, it will once again carry over those imbuement skills that you did have once you initially cast it, which means that you can spread around the shadow, you can spread around the cold, you can spread around the poison, and this will just absolutely decimate like mobs of enemies like it's no one's business. In terms of rolls though, we do want to go for a crossbow because we do want the extra damage to vulnerable. And we also want to look out for things like vulnerable damage. We also want to look out for critical strike damage with imbued skills and anything to be able to increase the amount of damage we do generally. So things like dexterity is absolutely huge. So that is my current gear, that is pretty much what I currently rock and to be able to show all the gameplay that has been going on in the background, but in terms of like what you can swap in if you do have a few uniques, feel free to try out Word of a Can, you definitely could swap out Edge Masters to try and slot that one in, um, it's not a bad shout, but I'm not personally a fan of being able to take away one of the imbuement skills to put that in, but I'm not saying, but you definitely can get away with it, you definitely can get some use out of it, so if you do want to mess about with that, feel free there's nothing wrong with doing so whatsoever in terms of like the other ones though we do have things like uh fists of fate which allows our attacks to randomly deal anywhere between one to uh anywhere all the way up to 300 percent of their normal damage this could be huge uh it does mean that you will be sacrificing ranks into your barrage but because of that uniqueness of what fists of fate does it has more than enough of the potential to do even more damage so if you do have a good roll which unfortunately i do not have just this moment you definitely can feel like slot that in and give that a go in terms of like other things we do have penitent greaves which is also really nice this works really nicely with the cold imbuement as well uh, and it also if you get a good roll on this not only are you getting movement speed but you will also be as standard doing crowd control for when enemies walk into that trail of frost so you don't necessarily need cold imbuement as much to set up those extra multipliers so penitent greaves is actually a decent slot in as well other things that you can get used to like to great effect if you do mod into them quite nicely it's going to be temerity temerity will then give you a barrier which if you do use the aspect that gives you additional damage to uh, while you have barrier active is a great way and it's probably probably more much more preferred over edge masters in terms of having that consistent damage potential feel free to be able to slot that in and give that one a go if it's so inclined and then lastly one of the other weapons and i'm not a personal big fan of this one but you definitely can use this is going to be condemnation uh, if you can get a good enough roll on this not only is it increasing your core skill damage uh, but it will also give you a slight chance of being able to get three combo points uh, a bit more consistently meaning you're throwing more arrows out pretty much there here there and everywhere uh, so you can have it so that it does, barrage does a little bit more i'm not a huge fan in terms of like the rolls that this weapon does come with but it's still a unique that you can use and you still get away with in terms of skill rotation when it comes to this build, you pretty much need to know which imbuement to use and when. You can get away with using all of them at any, at any point, if you feel free to do that, but when you start getting into that harder content, you kind of need to know which one you need to rely on most. If you are coming up against a uh, horde that does have uh, elites within them, Cold Imbuement is going to be the best one to start that fight off. Not only is it going to be chilling enemies, it's also going to be applying crowd control multipliers that you do have in your build, but also it will then work towards like freezing those enemies, meaning that they can't do anything back towards you. Uh, when it comes to like being like you find yourself stuck in a horde, like a horde or a mob, and you can't do much about it. Uh, poison is going to be your best friend because that means that they will reduce the amount of damage they will be doing to you but you're also then damage over timing them and you're just kind of putting them down on a clock but then for like general mobbing shadow imbuement is going to be your best friend and it's just going to pretty much make short work of everything that stands in front of you in terms of like how I like to do with my combo points, I, look, I do like to start a fight with four, three points into combo points and then fire off a barrage of eight arrows, allowing them to do their ricochet business. Uh, but if you're like finding that you've got more than one mob right pretty much there and then and you kind of need to uh, have, like deal with them quite quickly, I just alternate back and forth between puncture and barrage, meaning that I only have the one combo point. So six arrows is normally more than enough and that seems to like, that seems to work out the best for me. 
But there you go, that is everything to do with the Rainbow Barrage build. I hope you've enjoyed, I hope you've learned something useful with ourselves. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe, it really does help the channel out. And I want to know down in the comment section down below, what do you enjoy about this build? Is it something that you're interested in picking up? Do you prefer this over other Barrage builds? And is there anything that you would possibly ch suggest changing, or maybe even swapping out to improve this even further? If you want to see some other rogue builds, because I do consider myself a bit of a rogue main, let me know in the comment section down below as well what other builds you would like me to test out. Would you like me to see like a trap build? Would you like me to test out a flurry endgame kind of build? Let me know all that down below. Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video. Massive thank you to the Babylonian family as always for their continued support. It really does help the channel out. And like I said, we are pushing for that 5k sub goal for the end of the year. So anything you can do would be greatly appreciated from us. But with all that said and done, that just leaves me to say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on the next video.